Okay, picking up where we left off, we're on page uh, 273 talking about autonomous systems. So the word autonomous basically means it it all belongs to me. I can configure it any way I want. And I don't have to tell anyone or ask anyone permission. There's no governing body. And therefore, the routing rules that I have inside my autonomous system may not be exactly what you expect. And they're not necessarily going to tell you what the routing decisions are. So the routing policies are kind of weird. Um, now, if you guys remember the, the talk about net neutrality, several years ago, there was a couple of companies that got together and said, we want to pass some sort of a law or a configuration with the FCC that basically said, uh, we want to force these autonomous system guys uh, to, have, to not play dirty with our data. And here's the scenario. Um, let's say that you're an autonomous system in your Time Warner, and um, Netflix is just chewing up, you know, 50% of your bandwidth. Uh, and so you're thinking, ah, oh, geez, I'm gonna have to spend millions and millions and millions of dollars to add more infrastructure, more lines, more routers, more upgrades in order to keep up with, you know, Netflix. Or what if I just detected that this was a Netflix packet and sent it on slower links? Could I do that? Well, legally you could because this is an autonomous system. You could create a routing rule, they're called policies. You could create a policy that said, you know, uh, Skype traffic gets sent at this speed and Netflix traffic gets sent at a different speed and web traffic gets sent at this speed, you, you could create a rule that could reduce the amount of impact of traffic going through your system. Now let me explain it from, from the autonomous systems point of view. Okay, so this is a little, a little weird, but just bear with me. Okay, um, let's say I, I'm in the, I have Sprint over here and I have Comcast over here and I'm Time Warner in the middle and you wanna send a packet all the way from Sprint through Time Warner to Comcast, okay? I, I'm, I'm basically passing data from my competitor, right? These, are, these three companies are, are competing against each other. So I'm sending, I'm passing traffic that originated from my competitor and, go, and is destined to another one of my competitors. What is my obligation to pass that data through, right? I'm not making any money off of this. None of my subscribers are paying for this link that's being put going on. So why why should I send it at the same speed as my paying customers? If I have a paying customer, I'm going to give him top-notch service. But these other freeloaders free that are coming through my system that aren't paying, poof, I'm not going to give them top billing. I'm going to send them through you know the last year's equipment at slower speeds. That's their argument, okay? By the way, this whole thing got political one hell of a hurry. And unfortunately, like an awful lot of technical issues, uh, practically everyone got it wrong. You know, the press, the people in Congress, they didn't understand the issue. And so they ended up, you know, really making it worse uh, because they just didn't understand what they were talking about. So one more time, net neutrality was about routing policies in autonomous systems. What, what Netflix... And by the way, Netflix was one of the companies that was pushing for net neutrality. And, and oddly enough, the porn industry was too. Seriously, guys. You know, because you could have a policy to say, well, you know, all porn is going to be dropped down to a different you know, level than other types of traffic. And so what, what net neutrality was about is you autonomous systems ought not peek inside it and figure out what kind of traffic is to, in, in order to... to mess with us. In other words, it, all traffic should be considered equal. Okay, that was their thinking. It didn't go very far and it didn't work out, but that's beside the point. Okay, so how in the world do I know how to pass data from one, one autonomous system to another? Well, the way it works is every autonomous system is assigned a number. You know, just like every machine has an IP address or a MAC address, same kind of thing, except autonomous system is assigned a number uh, by you know the same people who give out IP addresses. Okay, now now let me let me rephrase. All autonomous systems that pass other people's data, not these stub guys. Okay, because 
a stub guy is only gonna give it's only gonna get packets that are destined to it or past packets that came from it it'll never ever get other customers traffic right I mean if it did it because the router was configured wrong right I mean in other words you don't go through Bob's plumbing to get to Jane's flower shop okay there's no connection between these two things it's just a, so these stub guys don't have numbers all right so only the big boys which is why I mentioned that the term autonomous system is typically used exclusively to talk about the big boys although that's not technically correct so here we go so here's an autonomous system and it has some links it has some primary links and some other links and so for example whatever the heck this is this is probably a backbone guy this is probably like Sprint or Time Warner or one of these guys it has thousands of, of connections coming out of it so quite like frankly there's there's three different ways you can get traffic to this and let's just say this was like regional so this is like the East Coast and this is like the West Coast and maybe this is in the same state that these in so wherever the packets are coming from kind of sort of depends on how they're actually ended up getting there okay so I need a way to, to create a, a what's called a routing table that passes between one autonomous system and another that's essentially what we want to do okay so let's talk about how you actually get there one way of routing one technique for routing is I tell you precisely how to get from point A to point B I say for example if you're in Colleen and you want to go to Lamb Passes I would say go to west of Copper's Cove and then go west of Kempner and then go west to Lamb Passes that is one way of, of routing the other way of routing is the way these guys work is I say go west of Copper's Cove and ask them how to get there and so I go to Copper's Cove and say, hey, how do I get a limb past this? They go, well, go west to Kempner and ask them. So you go to Kempner. Hey, how do we get the land passes? Well, go west and you'll find land passes. Woohoo! So they don't have to give you the entire the entire path. That, that's one way of doing it, is to give you the entire path. And the other one is just go to the next guy and ask him. So there's two different ways you can do these kind of routing decisions. It's a little weird. Okay. <clears throat> so remember that the route is just routing produces a route which is just kind of a, a list of, of autonomous systems in this world so there's a little diagram here <clears throat> and this is the 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 link this is the list of autonomous systems okay so if I if I'm over here and I want to send something all you need to know is the next hop in the list that's all you need to know how do I get from here to the next place? You know, how do I get from here to Copper's Cove? And then it tells you the path to go to get there. So here are the list of autonomous systems that make that thing work. Um, I'm going to show you a real life example. Well, mostly real life. I'm going to grab the IP address of this machine right this very second. And I'm going to go to this place that will actually analyze what my route is. So give it just a second. Okay, well, that's fine. This is gonna build that map we just saw for this machine right here in this second. I may have to use some video, oh, there you go. Okay, so here is my the routing map for most of me. Uh, I, basically, I don't have, this is not how to get to me from like Japan, okay? But this is, you know, to get to me from as far as I want to, to think. So I I particularly, I'm using 165 asses <laughs> autonomous system. That's why I don't like to use AS. So there's 165 uh, autonomous systems that, are, that are, can get to me. And so if you're over here, well, you basically say, well, get me to there. And that guy says, get me to there. And that guy gets, says, get me to there. So it just passes these things along. Okay, I'm not going to go through all that. You could play with this and you know figure out these things uh, it's kind of cool but the bottom line is that these are systems that were designed to route packets through these autonomous systems this is what makes the internet work and unfortunately unlike routers that you put in your environment your environment is always I want the lowest 
cost or shortest path or whatever term you want. You want it, it's optimized for performance, whatever you're after, okay? These guys, it's not necessarily optimized for performance. You may end up getting traffic sent to a different location through a different link to get to you in a roundabout way because these guys aren't really trying to make things the quickest or the fastest or the most optimal. What they're trying to do is get your traffic through their system any way they can. You would hope they would have your best interest at heart, but autonomous systems don't have to follow those rules, okay? So let's continue. So the router is responsible for typically just one hop. So if I go back to this, um, the router, this is the, the router, the network. So the next hop going that way, that's all it knows. It doesn't really know the rest of it. So it knows the next hop and then some sort of a metric. And the metric is what happens if I have multiple paths and you know, this is like the waiting thing. So for example, this looks like a standby link. Uh, this is how, this metric is basically, you know, okay, maybe it's down or maybe it's slow or something. Uh, so th this is the path you would take to get there, but they're probably not recommending you get there. There's pop Look at all the other ways to get to 5661. There's lots of other choices to get there. Okay. So <clears throat> this is what's called a routing table. And so every router has a table like this that says, how the heck do I get from point A to point B? <clears throat> and they have a, a, a list of, of of autonomous systems and some sort of a metric and most likely there are going to be lots of different routes you could take to get from point A to point B lots of them and then the choices you have to make if, if it's inside your network hopefully it's a, a decision that makes sense to you if it's outside your network you don't really have a clue how their routing decisions are made why does does 3549 talk directly to to 174, you'll probably never know. Okay. So one more thing to talk about before we, we kind of move on a little bit is this the concept of a default route. So here's how things work in the real world. I have a PC on a, a LAN and uh, the PC just generated a packet to be sent out. The, the PC is going to look at that IP address and make a decision. It's going to look at that and say, wait a minute, this is a local, uh, a, a local IP address. I'm just going to throw it on the wire. So, poof. you know, so you generated, you know, 192.168.1.4 and that happens to be the network that you're on. So it's going to say, well, that's local to me. I'm just going to put it on the wire and be done. And then you say, I want 123. 47.72.4 and it's going to say well that's not local to me I'm going to push that up to the router because it ain't mine I don't know whose it is I don't have a clue where that thing is I don't have to know where that thing is all I need to know is is it mine that's the only thing I need to know mine or not mine my network not my network if it's not my network I pass it to the router so most every machine most every machine has just one router that's available to it and typically it's called the default router and the default router is if you don't know how to get there send it to me and i'll figure it out that's what that means the default router says i'm the guy who's responsible for figuring out how to get from point a to point b so if you can't if you don't know just send it to me now in the bob's plumbing example where i said we had two different routers going on those were not the edge routers those were the routers internally so it, it, that didn't, I'm not counting those guys because those guys said you, you probably had two routers in a router to how to get to your stuff internal and then a, a default router that went to the outside world. So it's in their particular case, there's a third category instead of just local and foreign, it's local, local through one of my local routers and then foreign. Okay. This is a good place to start for the 15 minute mark. We'll pick this up again in just a few.